One of the things that makes the Star Wars universe so great is the sheer amount of world building that they manage to fit into each shot. One of the ways they accomplish this world building is through the use of background characters. And I mean, one of the most famous scenes, for example, in A New Hope is the cantina scene. And just because you get an idea of how big the Star Wars universe actually is with all these unique and distinct alien creatures, you know, you can imagine a lot of little stories going on. And I mean, it's probably unsurprising then that each one of these background characters will typically have either some sort of story or some sort of comic book or some sort of action figure dedicated to them. Like, I mean, if you watch the scene in Jabba's palace, for example, pretty much each one of the creatures in Jabba's gang or each one of the people just hanging out there have their own name, have their own story, whatever. And I've been meaning to do kind of a bit of a lighter, fun video, so I figured today I would do my five favorite Star Wars background characters. And this isn't like the five background characters with the most interesting stories or, you know, who are the deadliest or anything like that, just the five that I like the most. All right, so number five is Will Row Hood. And I'd say 95% of you probably don't recognize that name, but I'd say 20% of you or more will probably know him when you see him. He's the ice cream guy from The Empire Strikes Back. You probably didn't see him there. Let's do it again, but in slow motion. So I like Willrow not because he's a compelling background character, although it's not like he's bad or anything, but rather because he's just one of those background characters of Star Wars that has just such a ridiculously detailed backstory considering his connection to the movies. And the story behind him is that when people watch the movie, he was pretty easy to pick out because it looks like he's carrying some sort of ice cream machine or ice cream maker. And let's be honest, that's probably what the prop was because it looks vaguely science fiction-y. And I mean, he developed this sort of infamy around Star Wars fans and at least, especially when the original trilogy came out, you know, if you say ice cream man, a lot of people probably know who you were talking about. And this led to him not only getting his own action figure, which really isn't that surprising, but was also featured in a Star Wars card game and kind of got this whole backstory about how he was actually, you know, a rebellion sympathizer and that ice cream machine he was holding was actually, you know, like a computer hard drive or something like that. I don't know, I just like it and I think Willrow was kind of a funny reflection of Star Wars fandom as a whole. My fourth favorite background character in Star Wars is Lack Sivrak, who is probably better known as the Wolfman. And I say better known, but a lot of you guys might not know who he is because the Wolfman was only around for the original version of A New Hope and he was later replaced by a CG puppet. But you know what? I actually like the original version and I think a lot of people do because it kind of captures what I know a lot of us loved about A New Hope. It was campy and it was cheesy Flash Gordon style science fiction, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. And in fact, I think it's actually a good thing and it's endearing and it adds so much charm to the movie. And he was replaced in 1997, but before that, and really, well, I guess since, he was popular among fans and he was part of, you know, various Star Wars role-playing games and he had his own cards and his own action figures. And his story was actually a lot of fun. And I mean, this is pure Legends Expanded Universe cheese, but I like it. Wolfman's story was that he met another alien at the Mos Eisley Cantina and they fall in love and then they join the rebellion and again these are both characters that are in a new hope for less than 15 seconds each wolfman and his love both end up perishing in their fight against the empire wolfman's uh, love dies at the battle of hoth and wolfman himself dies at endor however don't fret because they somehow manage to become force ghosts and presumably live on happily ever after my third favorite star wars background character is definitely the most well-known on the list. It's IG-88. I know what you're thinking, isn't IG-88 not really a background character? Isn't he kind of mainstream in the Star Wars universe? Well, kind of, but he really only shows up in one scene of Empire Strikes Back, and he's just in the background looking tough. But yeah, does he ever make use of that one scene? Like, he stands there, and like I said, he just looks intimidating. Like, usually the robots in the Star Wars universe, except for really, like, the interrogator droid, don't look that serious or scary, but IG-88 certainly does. And in the Legends canon, there were actually a bunch of IG-88s, and the one we see on the Super Star Destroyer is just one, and there are a bunch of crazy stories with all of them. The one that sticks out the most to most people, including myself, is the one where he actually is taking control over the Death Star 2 during the Battle of Endor. And his plan was basically to not only fuse with the Death Star, but to take control of all the droids in the universe, so this adds another 
albeit silly, layer to the Battle of Endor. IG-88 also makes an appearance in probably one of my top three favorite Star Wars games, and that's Shadows of the Empire, and I didn't take that into consideration when making this list, but he's basically one of the game's main boss fights, and he is actually terrifying. He makes this really scary sound. <laughs> and he like hunts you down and it used to just scare the shit out of me as a kid. But I mean, he's always been just the coolest of the bounty hunters in that scene for me. So for that reason, IG-88, number three. Oh yeah, and by the way, IG-88 also has a connection to the cantina in episode four. He's actually part of his head, can be seen as like a drink machine in the behind the bar. Okay, so number two is Max Rebo, AKA the Blue Elephant Man from Return of the Jedi, and I just like this guy because he's so funny. He's actually got such a good costume, and he's got a full keyboard set around him, and he's just really kind of interesting and well thought out. To be honest, I could have put any of the musicians on this list. I mean, I've got a whole video about the origin of Figrin Dan and the modal nodes, who are the band in the cantina. And of course, Droopy McCool is awesome, and he's got an amazing name. The musicians were just, honestly, they were some of the best creatures they made, and they were definitely some of the most fun, too. I like Max Rebo particularly because you can basically talk to anyone who's watched Return of the Jedi and ask them about the Blue Elephant Man and they probably will know who you're talking about. Jabba's Palace generally just has some of the best extras and some of the best background characters. However, Max Rebo is not actually my favorite. For that, we'll have to go to number one. Alright, so time for my number one favorite Star Wars background character. And I did kind of tip my hand when I told you he was from Jabba's Palace, but I'm going to guess that most people still wouldn't have been able to guess him. So it's Sayelt Moray, otherwise known as Yak Face. And Yak Face is popular among Star Wars collectors, mostly because he's got a really rare action figure, but I like him for more superficial reasons, and that's just he's really silly looking, he's got a huge nose, and he's really fun to look at. And he kind of makes every scene that he's in a little better. Like, you can see him a little bit in the back of Jabba's palace if you look closely, but he really shines in like a two second cutaway shot on Jabba's sail barge where he's kind of just like spinning around back and forth and I don't know ever since I saw that and really noticed him he's been my favorite background character and I mean he's got kind of an interesting story too he's basically like an informant for Jabba and he kind of sticks around with the rabble dabble trying to figure out if anyone's plotting against Jabba or if Jabba has anything to worry about because he's got like a he's very good at speaking to people and I guess he's mildly psychic too so he's a good informant for Jabba but he also has worked as an informant for both the Alliance, the Rebel Alliance, and the Galactic Empire. But really none of that matters a whole lot to me. I just like him because he's a really fun design. He's really unique and he really stands out. But let me know what you guys think. I mean, this kind of stuff, like these little nuances of especially the original trilogy are amongst my favorite things to talk about. So I wanna hear who you guys like, who's your favorite background character, not only from this list, but from the original trilogy and the prequel trilogy. And if you've got one from the sequel trilogy, there too. Personally, I didn't mean to pick only original trilogy characters. That's just kind of how it works out for me. And I know that there are some good ones in the prequel and the sequel trilogies that I missed. So let me know what you guys think. Let me know what questions you want me to get to next. And as always, thank you for watching and may the force be with you.